Welcome to the Bible study on the life of Jesus Christ, Son of God, according to Mark. Today we'll be looking over chapter 16, and this is our last lesson in this series. So let's open with prayer. Father, our hearts are full of gratitude for this season of the year. As we approach Easter, we are aware once again of the great truth that Jesus Christ is alive. He's here with us in this room. We thank you that he guides us, teaches us, comforts us, and gives us peace. And we are never alone. Open our eyes to the truths in our lesson today and help us to apply them to our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in our first section, Jesus is resurrected. Mark tells us in verse 1, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices. Question one, what did the women intend to do at the tomb? Mark says, so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. They hadn't been able to complete the embalming process on Friday because all work was forbidden on the Sabbath. So Saturday evening, when the Sabbath was over, they bought spices so they could anoint Jesus' body the next day. Verse 2, Mark says, Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. So question 2, what was their concern? Verse 3, they ask each other, Who will ro roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? There was no door to the tomb. There was just an opening with a groove, and a big circular stone had been rolled into the groove. The women knew they weren't strong enough to move it, so they were wondering who would roll it away. Question three, what did they find? Verse four, when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. So question four, can you think of a time that you worried needlessly over a problem only to find that it had been rolled away by the Lord? That's typical of many of us, isn't it? We ask, who will handle this problem I have? I know I can't handle it. Who will solve it? And then we find that the Lord has worked it out for us. Question five, why was this stone rolled away? So that Jesus could get out or so that others could get in to see that he was already gone? The stone was rolled away so others could get in. Jesus didn't need for it to be rolled away. Verse 5, as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Question 6, what message did the angel give the women for the disciples? Verses 6 and 7, don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Question seven, what had Jesus told them in Mark 14, verse 28? He had told them, after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Verse 8, trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And verses 9 through 14, Mark refers to three different incidents. The first incident is in verse 9. Mark says, when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. Mark is referring here to an incident that's, a, that's recorded in John 20, verses 1 through 18. 
Now this is what John wrote. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started to the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Now, back to Mark, verses 10 and 11. Mark says, She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. They did not believe Mary. They didn't believe her when she reported that she had seen and talked with Jesus. Now the second incident is in verse 12. Mark says, Afterward Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. So Mark is referring to an incident that Luke tells us about in Luke 24, verses 13 through 25, 35. This is what Luke wrote. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one living in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Jesus said to them, How foolish you are, 
And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Then Mark tells us, back in verse 13, These returned and reported it to the rest. But they did not believe them either. The disciples did not believe the two who reported walking, talking, and eating with Jesus. Now the third incident that Mark refers to is in verse 14. Mark says, Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So Mark is referring to what Luke reported in Luke 24, verses 36 through 41. This is what Luke wrote. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. But they still did not believe it. So question eight, what reaction to the resurrection has been repeated in every generation for 2,000 years? They do not believe. The disciples didn't believe Mary Magdalene who told them she had seen and talked with Jesus. They didn't believe the two who had walked, talked, and eaten with Jesus. They didn't believe Jesus had risen. They didn't believe that he was alive. And that's true of many people today. They don't believe God's word, which tells us very clearly what happened, according to eyewitnesses who saw and talked with him after the resurrection. My husband Jim and I went to Israel a number of years ago, and we were privileged to see the empty tomb. But I didn't need proof to know that it was empty. God's word says it's empty, and I believe God's word. But Matthew tells us in chapter 28, verses 11 through 15, while the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you're to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. So unfortunately, lies were added to unbelief. Satan is the father of lies, and he is the one who puts doubt in the minds of men and women. Jesus was resurrected. 
He rose from the dead, and he is alive today. Before he ascended into heaven, Mark tells us in verse 15, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Now we can be grateful that the disciples obeyed that command. You and I are here this morning because of their obedience. Multitudes of people all around the world are in heaven because Christians have obeyed that command down through the years. And now it's our turn. That command still stands. It's a command to every Christian. In Matthew's gospel, he adds these words. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. That's what enables us to share with others. Jesus is with us. You and I can't convince anyone that Jesus is alive. We simply share what God's Word says, and the Holy Spirit convicts them just as he convicted you and me and enabled us to believe. Question nine, what two destinies face every person who has ever lived? Verse 16, Jesus said, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. That's it. There are only two destinies saved or condemned. There is no middle ground. Those who believe will be saved. Those who do not believe will be condemned. You may know someone who doesn't believe. You could be the instrument that God can use to convey the truth to them. In verses 17 and 18, Jesus said, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. God enabled those early Christians. Whatever problem they encountered, God enabled them. He enabled them to drive out demons. He enabled them to speak in other tongues as they did on the day of Pentecost. You remember that visitors were in Jerusalem from every nation, and each person heard the disciples speak in his own language. And God enabled them to pick up snakes. One example of that is recorded in Acts 28, verses 1 through 6. It tells us about an incident that that Paul encountered. He was on a ship headed to Rome and they were shipwrecked. They swam to the island of Malta. The islanders showed them kindness and built a fire to warm them. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a snake, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. God protected him. God protected those who faced other problems. God also gave them the power to heal the sick. And God will enable us also. Question 10, where is the Lord Jesus today? Mark says in verse 19, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. And that's where he is today. The Lord Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of God. Question 11. What instructions did he give his disciples before he ascended? Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. And they did that. In verse 20, Mark tells us, then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. The book of Acts is a record of what the disciples did. They went out and began to preach everywhere. Those words in verse 15 are addressed to you and me also. 
Question 12, how are you fulfilling the instructions in our day? Some of you are teaching God's Word in Sunday school. Some are inviting friends to a Bible study. Some share your testimony and tell others what God has done in your life. Some of you are probably planning to invite a friend to go to church with you on Easter Sunday. Easter is the most glorious day of the year. It celebrates the fact that Jesus is alive. I'm sure that you would agree with me that there is no greater joy in this world than to see someone accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and receive the assurance that their sins are forgiven and they will spend eternity in heaven. That's what motivates us to obey Jesus' command to go and tell others the good news. If there is anyone here or who hears my voice who's never made that life-changing decision to invite Jesus into your life as Lord and Savior, I hope you'll do that today. Just pray, acknowledge that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins Ask him to forgive you. Come into your heart and control your life. If you do that, the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that was in Jesus, will come in. He'll guide you, comfort you, teach you, encourage you, and much, much more. And once he comes in, he'll never leave. And the good news is that all your sins will be forgiven, and you will have the assurance of eternal life. The Bible says God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. That's a promise from God's Word. That is God's amazing grace. You and I will never understand it. All we can do is marvel at it and be grateful for it. So let's close in prayer. Father, we do thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is alive today. Guide us as we look to you for ways we can fulfill Jesus' command to share the good news with others. We want them to experience the joy and peace we have. So give us opportunities to share and give us the words we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of this Bible study. Thank you.